I got that thought still. Okay, I'm ready. I'm ready for you. Uh, what I was sharing is that I've been, as a general contractor, over the last 25 years, I've been hiring you. And I hire them, and they, I take them to work with me. But what I always tell the youngsters when you're working with me, I don't want you just coming to work to make some money. I want you to come to work to learn. So embrace what we're doing, because see, that way you can go out and do the same thing I'm doing. It's not even a problem. You know, it's the saying that you can take a man in the river and fish for him, and eat for a day. But if you take a man in the river and show him how to fish, and eat for a lifetime. So the skills that I can show you, I can show you how to go out and make $50, $80, in an hour or two, like it ain't nothing. It ain't even hard. What? What do I sign up? Oh, you <laughs> sign up by embracing what I do. You got my number, call me up if you, you know, if, if me you talk. And uh, I got some projects going on. I'm finishing up one in the Thomas right now. So we go. I go out there, and, and if you're available, I'll let you come with me. Uh, Brother Joshua worked with me already. How many days? You got one or two days. Just one. He got one day in. He ain't called me back up. I was wondering where he's been. <laughs> he, he ain't called. The only reason why he hasn't, he hasn't been working with me, he hasn't called. Because see, as a, I'm, I'm a kind of contractor. I do remodeling on houses. That's what I specialize in. And I always put the young people in a position where they can win. I don't put you in something that's going to be too deep for you. So I put something in there so you can win. But you got to work, too. Because I ain't going to play. You got to work. You no, that's true. I, I amen that. My son has gone out with Mr. West. Yeah. Yes. And he, he really had good hard work. I loved it. He came home yeah. good and tired. He's smiling. <laughs> good and tired. He's smiling. Oh, he's smiling. Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. But, you know, I, I think, you know, we just have to slow our rhythm down. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Well, there's a lot of opportunities everywhere. Yes. People aren't really looking. I mean, my grandson was taking out people's trash, and one day he had a business. He had a flyer. He went down the street. I'll take out your trash, and I'll bring it back. And he had a little business, and the little one had to walk the dog. There's things to do. Yeah, but are you humble be bold. enough, you know, yeah. to step out and create the money yeah. for yourself? I you think. have to be bold. You got to change the paradigm. See, look. See, I, I'm, from a, I'm from the old school where... You just had to, you did what you had to do. And we had a lot of images around us of hustlers. We had, we had uh, in the community where I was at in Oakland, uh, it was a gentleman down the street. He had a regular job. I, know, I don't know what his regular job was. But all I know is every evening his garage door was open, up and he was working on televisions. And people would bring their television to him. He would fix them and they, you know, they'd pay him some money like that. Another guy down the street, what'd he do? On the side, he had vending machines. He took his vending machines out, collect the money. I worked with him when I was about 12 years old. Yeah. But so the point is, you have to be creative. This young man um, is a young man that works with me off and on. And he was having problems. He, he, he didn't have no job. Nothing was going on. And things were slow on my side. So I said, man, you know, you ought to just go in your neighborhood and hustle. He said, man, what can I do? I said, what do you mean, what can you do? I said, you got a rake? He said, yeah. I said, well, go door to door and tell everybody, ask everybody in the neighborhood, could I rake your leaves? And just, you know, tell them I'm trying to make some money. Rake See, look, that's a paradigm shift. But I would do it. Why? Because I know you can make good money doing it. Young man that, uh, that works with me from time to time, he does uh, constr uh, concrete work. That's what he does, pour concrete. And when the weather changes and job shifts, he don't have no work. He hustles raking leaves around the fall time with all the leaves out there. He's going to make $200 a day on the weekend. $200. All he did was rake leaves. He just knocked on the door. Hey, I got rake leaves. He got rake leaves. He got rake leaves. So what I was pushing Kelshawn and them is to go out and create a landscaping service. And Kelshawn got his little business cards now. And he's going to, he's getting ready to get out of school. He's going to do yards. And I'm going to show him how to do it because I did it. When I, before I became a general contractor, I used to go out and do yards. I used to, I made a flyer up. And put them on people's doors, start getting calls. And I started making money doing that. Create my own income. See, the problem is we've been conditioned to fail in this country. You haven't been taught to go out and create your own money. You've been taught to work for somebody else, to be somebody else's servant. Instead of using your own greatness. See, we're the original craftsmen. We used to go out and do this stuff. We used to create our own stuff all the time. And take our wares to the market and sell them. That's what we used to do. Now we sit around and we want somebody to tell us what to do. <laughs> no, but when you see those people selling the oranges, that's a good thing to see. Yes. You see people have this whole tray of yes. oranges. They're only selling $5 
they're selling them five to six dollars a bag. Right. But so they buy the bag for twenty. But <laughs> they buy it for twenty. They sell it for five. You know, it's in a bag, right? right. So what you should be thinking is, if I had a job, and I'm going to be paid four dollars an hour or five dollars an hour. There's someone just standing there by the oranges, and they're making. They're making a full day's wage, yes. however many people come to buy the lunches. Right. We're not really thinking, how are we going to use our time? And how do we want to make our money? You know, it's just amazing to me. But there's so many ways to make money around everyone. You know, but that's why I, I take the youngsters out. Boy, sister, I'll let you share. I was going to say that, you know, really for seniors who cannot garden anymore, Somebody could offer a gardening service to go down and do the first planting of the garden when garden seasoning comes. But people need somebody to come and get them weeds out because they can't do it anymore. But they still want to garden. They still want to have plants. And, you know, and it's so important. You could just have a flyer saying, I have a team of people going to come in. We'll, we'll, plant, we'll prepare your garden for the first time. And this is how much we charge. People will gladly play because they don't want to do it. They can't do it physically anymore. But pe people, young people who have strength in their hands and can <laughs> get down there and get them weeds up can yeah. do that. And, I, go ahead. Oh, go ahead. No, and I said, and we, some of our young people, uh, they have the mindset that certain jobs, you know, are beneath uh, them. Beneath them. Beneath yes. them, you know. Yes. I don't want to do that, you know. Yes. <laughs> and stuff like that. But, you know, like, they have to change that mindset and, and uh, realize that, you know, you have to start from somewhere, you know. And a little bit of money will maybe get you, you know, a pair of shoes that you need or something yes. like that. So you, you start from, you know, the bottom and you work your way up until you can do better. Yes. Until, you can, at, yeah. until you can do better. Until you, you can know. think innovatively mm -hmm. and creative. Because, you believe it or not, if you get locked up, you're going to make some license plates for the state of California. <laughs> and you're going to do it for less than 50 cents an hour because that's what's going to go on your books. So, you know, you have to think, if you get caught in the wrong place with the wrong person, what am I going to do? How creative can I be? You know, if you have a talent, and it's, it's graphics, if you learn the skill, if it's writing poetry, brother was here last week, he did poetry, he did art, use what you have. But understand, yeah. when you learn something, and you've been to college, that you have a skill, use that skill. I have had a conversation with my son. And he was telling me that he cooked food for a number of people. And they came and he said how he had to be the best at what he was doing so people would invest in him. And I told him, people give it away every day. I, you know what I'm saying. I had to get graphic. <laughs> if people give away the free stuff, somebody's going to be there to get it every day. So if a woman's giving away her privates for free, Sure, people will come, because anybody's going to turn down some free stuff is right. crazy. But all free stuff ain't good. That's true. And so, you know, you need to determine that you're a worthy investment and that you're going to charge. But how much are you going to charge for? So how much would you charge to weed some of these garden? How much is your time worth? You know, if, you can, if you're getting $20 an hour, that's $20 an hour. How many hours will it take you? That's $100. That's for five hours. If you need more than one person and it's $200, maybe it's two days. Double it up. Yeah. But the whole thing is, is that you have to determine that you're worthy. And if you say that I'm, if you're worthy and you believe it, you will do it. Because you're the one that sets the value on who you are. That's right. No one else. One thing I always encourage is you young, young people go out because you are going to get jobs, whatever. As you get those jobs, learn all you can about the job. Understand how it works. And if it feels good to you, decide you want to de develop one of those companies yourself. That's what you do. And you understand how that company works, and you figure out how you can make one better. And another thing you want to do is always expand, use your creativity. Never get content on a job. When you get on a job, don't be content. You get the, on that job, you start using your talent on the side, developing something. Maybe you got art, start making some art on the side and sell it at the market. So you always create something else. You always got to go in yourself and bring out your other talent because you're multi-talented. But you got to figure out what it is. I don't know what it is, but you bring it out, and now you got your little hustle on the side around your little job that you're doing. We have to get back to being the craftsmen that we, we were. We, we're the craftsmen. We're the original craftsmen. That's why uh, Dr. Clark says it's important that you know your history. You understand your greatness of who you are. And once you understand who you are, you know you can do greater things in the future.
That's right there. It's connected. It's connected. Who is it? Um, just listen to y'all because you just brought me back. Like, again, I went to all black school. <clears throat> And I just remember that. Excuse me, excuse me. You guys need to stop running in and out. I'm going to talk to y'all on the way home. You don't do that. Y'all stop running in and out. We almost finished, okay? You don't do that. Go ahead. I'm sorry, sister. No worries. No, I, I just um, noticed how, like, the, there wasn't, like, a, I guess, I don't even know what you would call the class in high school. Business education? I don't, I don't even know what it would be called. But there wasn't one, you know, like, so it's like, you, you go to college, you know, first thing you see, everybody's trying to give you a credit card, I don't know, I mean, yes, it's like, like you get right. hit with that's these right. like that. There's like people waiting in front of your school, or like right outside your classroom to get you a credit card, bank, right. you know, like all that's this right. stuff, and you that's end up right. having all this debt, and you know, well, my daddy would rip up the credit card when I got it, because <laughs> what they would do is they would give you a free shirt, or like they would give you something free, but I, my whole point is, you go into the world after high school without really a full grasp of exactly how to navigate yeah. in terms of um, man economic management. Yes. From just coming from, a, I mean, I, my, I could say like, you know, the majority of my school district was black, and there was no. I mean, we had econ we had economy. We took economy. We took, I mean, we took economics. But I'm, I'm just saying, like, just hearing y'all talk about this stuff, and I, I remember. Going, you know, you leave high school and it's just like you just left. That's right. You know, but that support system, like, what do you do after high school? How do you become a part of society? It, it really ain't there. It's like, you know what I'm saying? So, like, you, you become a part of what is considered, like, mainstream. Because we don't have that support system, like, how the Asians have it, how the Latinos have yeah. it. I mean, you go to college, you stand at your auntie's house. You don't have an apartment. Yeah. You see what I'm right. saying? Now, yeah. you got to pay apartment with your student loans that you get, and you're paying for an apartment instead of paying off the student loan. It's just all this network, basically. There's not this network for black. Well, I haven't seen it. You it's know, a maybe. system of life skills. Right. You you have to have your life skills developed in you while you're in school. Right. See, it's both already be there. And that goes back. Who, who said that piece about, um, what, who said, oh, I think that was the sister. She was talking about how, uh, like, the Asians, they have their cultural piece that they receive. Right. And they, they, get, they go to school, get their formal education, but they also have a cultural piece, too, that equips them with those, those skills, those life skills. Um, I know the uh, Jewish people. They do it. They have. They go to regular school, but then they go to school after that to learn about their culture and who they are, and and, and, and they, they go beyond that. So we have to do that too. That's what this is right here. There you go. That's what I was trying to get you to say. Oh, that's so exactly what this we is. Connected. This is a way. Yeah. I mean, when you're on the plantation, it's hard to know what the plantation looks like, but you're born as a as a blank slate, able to easily mold and to be dependent on this system. So you'll be a benefit. So when you finish your 12 years, after somebody reaped the harvest on you, then they will continue to reap the harvest. Yeah. If you don't know who you are, then you will be whatever they want you to be. Right. And so, you know, <laughs> having the Sankofa group and having kids at a young age, you'll be able to understand that mentally you are in the driver's seat. You determine who you are and who you will be. You have to believe in self first because you can take it to the level that you want to take it because you have a gift. She has a gift, yoga. I yes. couldn't, I mean, I can't do what she did. Yes. And no one in this room can does, do what she does, actually. Yes. But it's important to health. And if she was just marketing that like, like they do, they have a skill, and they say, I'm this, <coughs> because they know they're this, because their culture demands that they know who they are. Right. Our culture has not demanded that we know who we are, and we do not provide services to our community, and our community doesn't support us and so we have to embrace who we are to be able to change the dynamics and that's what this is all about hold that thought sister she 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 been at her hand up hold that thought i'm 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 gonna pick up what you said the old lady said well i went to college you know i finished college when i i i graduated from city college before i came okay so it is uh, to me, but to move in my own apartment, I like told my actual girl about it. I just stepped up to my two feet. I told her to give me 
uh, something I could like move out to myself. You want to be independent? Yeah, but I am independent already. Because my that's what can help me a big time. <laughs> you know, and I mean, <laughs> I mean, I mean um, you know, I was in, um, I came home twice, got pregnant, had my daughter in the mm -hmm. go to school, right. that I had to do. Right. My family was beside me, and I got, I had, um, before I had a meeting for my, my kid home, I told him, give myself, give myself to um, move out from my own. But guess what? I love my dream was. All right. Get my own place. Okay. Make a good contingent for myself. Beautiful. And that's for good. I mean, she's the greatest. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Carolyn. So guess what, Carolyn? You You're the greatest because you did accomplish your dream. Beautiful. Okay. That's beautiful. <laughs> beautiful. More power to you, sister, and I appreciate you being here sharing. Okay, so we get to the end of the workshop today. Oh, go ahead, Queen. Uh, you got oh. the thoughts, still? Oh, yeah. You still um, got it? Go ahead. Yeah, because y'all were both saying something about knowing who you are. And um, to me, it's like, if um, I give an analogy, like, if you a bird, but you don't know you a bird, are you going to fly? No. I don't think so. If you a bird...